I've been in and out of prison and correctional facilities my whole life. That was just, um, that was nothing to me. I always expect that's where I was gonna end up in my life. My mind was a different place back then. I always felt this is where I belong, this is where I'm gonna end up. So being in there was, it was just like a high school reunion or something. You're not afraid to see, you've seen it all, you know? You've seen anything. If you've seen it, if you've seen your best friend performing on somebody, don't be surprised if you're in there and you see that. Well, listen. Um, I first got in the box. I was in the I was in a, a juvenile reformatory for some kind of fighting, some stabbing incident. I was just a wild kid back then, and I remember I'm watching kids, other residents come over from the other side, and they're coming over with um, cracked ribs, um, swollen eyes, broken nose, knocked out teeth, whatever. They come out, but I noticed one thing. I'm, I'm just a young kid. These guys are smiling. They're happy that they're beat up. So I said, whoa, what's going on over there? And so I asked him, I said, well, boxing Mr. Stewart. And I'm already, I'm in, I'm in detention, I'm locked up, I'm in the hole. I said, I want to do that. Once I got a chance to do it, I boxed with Mr. Stewart and he, and I just knew I could beat him because he wasn't a big, he was just a white guy and he wasn't no big guy. So I didn't understand fighting. I used to understand street fight. I didn't understand fighting when you, when you have um, some kind of organized fighting. Size don't mean anything. I didn't know that. This is not what I know. So I'm going there flailing away, and I'm a, and next thing you know, he hits me in the stomach. I've never been hit in the stomach before. I just stopped breathing. I thought I was dying. So I threw up everything I had probably for the last two weeks. It's everything. Um, if I was throwing up like that now, you would think I'm having a heart attack. Cause you know the symptoms, you know, it's throwing up constantly, it's throwing up as I get hit in the stomach. And um, I asked him, I said, can you teach me that? And, that's, and he said, why you want to? I said, I wanted to know if I do that, and should I hit somebody in the stomach? And if he goes on, I could rob and go in his pocket and rob him. Before I met Cus, my, my life consisted of robbing houses, burglaries, assaults, pickpockets, just whatever you do, it's real um, sewer trash back then. I was ashamed of who I was, I was ashamed of my parents. I was ashamed that we lived in the Lapidata Hotel. I was just a big shamed of my life, so I, I, I had to make it. I absorbed everything and I just wanted to leave the world that I was a part of and I wanted to go somewhere else. Everybody thinks this is a tough man's sport. This is not a tough man, this is a thinking man's sport. A tough man is gonna get hurt real bad in this sport. Before you know you're fighting an individual, you, you watch a fight, he may have a fight or you watch his last fight. So you study his fights and the whole six, six weeks preparation is just the total destruction and the surrender of him. And that's just basically, that's how I prepare. I fought 15 times in one year, 18 times in one year, because that's what the program was. And anybody should know that. If you want to be a good fighter, nobody's going to be a good fighter, a world champion, if you're fighting once a year. You have to fight as constant as possible, three times a year, as much as you can. Stay in the gym as much as you can. This becomes a job. You can only do it for a short period of time, so you have to do it implicitly with everything you have. I think the reality of prison, you don't get anything unless you want it in there. Whatever happens to you in prison, this is what you ask for. Nothing happens to you if you don't give that vibe. If you don't want to get in your ass, don't give a vibe that there's a possibility you might like, you know, interacting with somebody's If you don't want to get killed or stabbed, then don't go in there and think I'm running this show. If you don't want these things, they won't happen to you. Whatever you want will happen to you. If you want to get high and become associated with a certain group of people, that's going to happen. If you want to be conscious and only be, be involved with the, the book groups, that will happen to whatever you want. Whatever's outside, you can do in there. Everybody in there is capable of killing you. I could just remember one particular time. We hear somebody say, help! We're just looking around because uh, we don't know. We're looking at each other. Where's that coming from? When, when it's up, and next thing you know, we, two guys run out of his room, and um, next thing you know, they went into the room to choke the guy and stab the guy, and um, it was all over some um, potato chips and some um, 
pop soda. The desperation rate in prison is just like um, at a fever pitch where they don't care with life doesn't mean nothing but a bag of potato chips or uh, Coke. <laughs> Professional boxing shit ain't gonna help you here. No refs, no rounds. You fight until somebody quits. I'm ready to fight right now. Oh. He just had a fight, he ain't had time to rest. I don't care, Ace. I'm sorry the way things worked out for you. He chews fighters up and he spits them out. You don't know who you're with. You take the fight to that, and he won't know what hit him. I got a feeling it's not gonna be your night. We're not winning any decisions tonight. McQueen, the son. We came to have a little talk. I lost my youth. I lost my career. I lost my dream. Now what? <laughs>